Hey, Mr. DJ, let's get this party started. I think I'm live. I'm going through my sound check. If you're new to my live streams, I normally use the first two to five minutes to make sure that everyone's joining. Make sure I have a couple people in the live chat to make sure I'm not talking to myself. Checking on my devices to make sure my audio is lit. It's usually not, so it's a thing. I love how like my live video gets a pre-roll ad. That's awesome. All right, so my latency between loading that and hearing myself talk is a few seconds. Shout out to the bro, Ernest. My stream health is trash, but I'm here. And today, I got an interesting request on the video that I did yesterday. I want to find it real quick so I can lead in with that and then go into my destruction of audio. You know how I am. <laughs> I'm right twice a day. A broken clock is right twice a day. So let's let's find out what's happening. Display name. There we go. So the bro or the sister, I don't know because their name is display name. I would like for you to elaborate on the point you make about most producers only have a certain number of versions of their beats. Like I think you said there are only three styles of Metro beats. Can you give examples of that, please? It doesn't mean that you have to use ex the example of Metro. You can just show hypothetical examples. I like the idea of producers not having a wide range or staying within their lanes. I would like to hear your take on their styles and lanes, the styles of beats that popular producers stay in. Um, and that was an interesting question because I didn't bring that up in yesterday's discussion. So this is what that video is about. It's about that question and how my brain branches off into a hundred different roads about how I've come to that conclusion or a version of that conclusion that I'm sure I can make a better argument for if I cared. <laughs> and I haven't cared about it because I kind of say it off the cusp all the time. I'm like, everyone sounds the same. But I mean that, but I haven't had to formulate a reason to prove that to anybody because I've accepted it already. So now I'm asked to do the groundwork. And here we are. So let me check in chat real quick. What's good, MG? What's good, Bang and T? What's good, Mika Moon? So mad I'm not home for this. Well, for those of you who are catching me in passing, I appreciate you stopping by to say hello, but I do save them now. So the tech, the exact title that it is, is the title it's going to be. And I noticed on my last two or three videos, the live videos have um, been in uh, sequential order. As long as I add a graphic to them ahead of time, they don't get shuffled down the list. So they'll always be my latest uploads, of course. And um, yeah, I mean, if you get a chance to watch it later, finish this video later, please let me leave me a comment on that that new video because the chat isn't comments. The chat is chat. It's a separate entity. So if you come back to it later, just leave a comment. Say, hey, MG, I checked it out. I'd appreciate that. DJ MVP says, MG Master of the Future. <laughs> What's good, MVP? Matthew says, seriously, just finished the live stream from yesterday. Amazing. I appreciate it. What's good, L Boogie? What's good, Jason? What's good, Ad Sean J? Ad Sean J, you said something recently I read from you, bro. Was it a comment I read from you earlier today that I liked? Appreciate you checking that out. What's good, Big A? What's good, Locke? What's good, Shane? Shane's in the building. Dope Snare's in the building. Osiric Bell's in the building. Tamashi's in the building. What's good, everybody, with our 10 second latency? All right. I appreciate you checking in. So let me go into my, uh, what is that called? My Rain Man mode real quick. So two, so two, so two things. Are y'all still commenting? Hold on. I'll make sure my brain is doing this right. Cause you know, I get in the Rain Man mode and that's when all the cool stuff happens. Um, so I got that comment, right? I got the display name comment. And he wanted me to expand on what I mean by like most producers have a triangle offense in terms of the, 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 their range of creativity. And then this guy responded, and I see him respond to a lot of different content that I don't expect him to see respond on, but he, every once in a while, he shows up on my channel and I believe he's a little bit older than me. So I want to approach his criticism with a, a type of respect. Actually, I don't, I don't, I don't want to attack him though, because I understand what he's saying and why he's saying it, but I want to attack the narrative first. Because it's going to tie into my bigger point. Because I'm going to prove my point by attacking the narrative, I think. So let me just read this to you guys. I see more comments coming in. Let me say hello to everybody. What's good, Jacob? What's good, El Boogie? What's good, Lester? 
What's good, Garrett? What's good, Osiris? What's good, F. Smittick? What's good, everybody? So I'm going to read this real quick, y'all. Y'all can still comment this stuff. I just didn't want to feel like I let anybody out. What's good, Nuck? So, triple seven wisdom. You know, he's dealing with the numbers, the mathematics of the day. He says, with all due respect, this is toxic thinking. And he's, re he's referring to the live video from yesterday. And that's why I'm on defense. It's like a baby that does not want to let go of his mama's breasts. We can let go of sampling. We can create original songs. And that's what triggered me. I didn't get triggered by toxic thinking. I have tons of toxic thinking. I have no problem with that. That's the part that, I, that triggered me to want to respond. We can. Why be good at it when we could be great at it? I don't know. I guess the difference is how much you get paid. Learn music fundamentals and create original music and songs with your own brain. So I, I can't read this whole thing. I do this line by line. So let me read the whole thing because I, I want to I'm gonna read the whole thing and then I'm gonna go by it line by line. There we go. When black people had creativity, originality, ambition, skill, proficiency, we created totally new genres. We do not have to sample. You're choosing to. Your beats do not have to sound like everyone else's. Find me another James Brown or Prince. Yes, I know that you can't. They were original. Sampling is lazy. It's not efficient because you're not exercising your creativity and originality. You are cheating yourself because of those things. Go ahead and try to create from a totally blank canvas. Create your own drums, buy a drum set, and sample it if you have to so you don't get sued for the snare sample, right? There's a little bit of humor there. Create your own chord progressions. Don't use Melodyne to borrow from others. Don't use Easy Keys to borrow the play style of others or any chord software except for the circle of fifths. Create your own original baseline from your own brain. Create your own melody. Create your own arrangement and forget what's popular. Just do you. This is my challenge to all of you so-called producers who use sampling as a crutch. So because of how he ended that, I knew he wasn't aiming it directly at me per se, because I don't just sample, nor do I use it as a creativity crutch, which is the, the, the bigger argument that we have. Um, is sampling just the lazy man's way to money? And that's two different questions in one, and I'll explain that. Let me check out these other questions. Os, Osiric, Osric, bro, man, if you don't put a if you don't put a consonant before the O, so I can say it correctly. What's good, one in black one? What's good, salute Dane, Jason Ordona said, "Fuck out of here." I'm not sure if he's talking about us or he's talking about the comment yet because of our delay. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute. Ad Sean says, how is it original music? Everyone is playing something they heard before. Uh-oh. Shane said, but I wanted to hear his music. I want to hear his music, the guy giving the advice, right? I want to hear bro's music now, right? Right, 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 right. There's an infinite amount of scales. They're just vibrations. That was correct. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to do this line by line because I don't think the idea that he's standing on is a bad idea. I think it's an old idea. And the reason why I think it's an old idea is because we're getting older. I think there's a, a chance for things to have variation and difference when it's new. And I'm going to use a very exa a cool example we all relate to. When, when the iPod Touch came out, I think the iPod Touch came out before the iPhone, right? iPod Touch, iPhone kind of came out at the same time. And Apple invented an app store. They created a game market, a, a video game market that uh, dealt with touch, which was new at the time, that dealt with the limitations of hardware at the time, um, and that dealt with a new marketplace for independent developers at the time. So you didn't have these black blockbuster budgets to create crazy games on handheld, which is why all of them are so cheesy. And then you had to use Swift and the code that's geared towards, uh, Lin uh, not Linux, but uh, uh, what is it called? My brain's like, phew, Unix. Unix-based languages and Python script. Anyway, all these new tools. There's a new toolbox. There's a new sandbox. And people start making games for these devices. And because they start making games for these devices, and there was a store, something happened called competition. So people not only just make games because they felt like making games, they wanted to make good games that people liked, that they played, and that they sold. <laughs> they sold. So I remember all the early games, all these different ways to interact with the iPod Touch and swipe and do all these things, right? And then Candy Crush came. Candy Crush came, 
and most people who have a touch device have have played and experienced Candy Crush. So once Candy Crush gave all those tools and locked it into this Suedo Tetris, which it was sampled or borrowed from, um, and they added its rules, they added its colors. When you search for Candy Crush, you can get a million variables of Candy Crush. And these different variations of Candy Crush um, may be even more fun or more innovative. So what did Candy Crush do? They made Soda Crush. They made this crush. They made that crush. Anytime a developer bit them, Candy Crush bit them back and made it better within their own environment. Basically, they made this box. Other developers made the box better. And then Candy Crush came back and said, all right, let me sharpen my edges and put a triangle on it and make this a house. Now, Candy Crush is a subgenre of gaming. So if a new app comes out or a new game comes out that's remotely similar to Crushing Blocks in Colors, you can be like, yeah, that game is like Candy Crush. So what most humans don't do is say, why? Why do you, why do you refer to Candy Crush to a person that's been, never, never made, played Candy Crush, right? Or what does Candy Crush mean? Why didn't you say Tetris anymore? That's what happens. That's what happens to all of us. So what Wisdom is talking about, let's take it back to the iPod Touch when everyone had different tools and there was no real competition yet. That's an old way of thinking. Candy Crush is here now. So everything that you create for the sake of competition has to beat Candy Crush first. First and foremost, if you do not beat Candy Crush, you will never be number one. And most of the times you won't even be number two because you then are competing with the people copying Candy Crush. Look at your app store top apps in that category. You'll understand what I mean vividly and clearly. For some reason, creative people have a problem with that. And that problem that they have with that then becomes toxic thinking in their approach of how they create music, get attention, and make money. And that's where I, that's where I want to go. But I also want to use synonym and kind of qualify that better because I, I can make this a way stronger argument. Right now, I'm in my emotional bag. So forgive me. <laughs> Let me read some of these comments first because more people came in. I want to hear bro's music, blah, 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 the comment MG, blah, 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 don't make dollars, don't make sense, A, Todor, you retracted the message, never got a chance to see it, Jason says competition is good, competition refines objects into prettier objects, that's all the market cares about, the prettiest object, they don't care about how many objects are available, there is no style of analyzation than MG1, all right, what's up, Todor, I, it's not a bad idea, but why try to knock people down their groove when giving that opinion? Anyway, screw that guy. <laughs> why is up? He's talking up to people. Well, well, Triple Seven Wisdom makes a lot of comments on a lot of videos, though, and that's the thing. Now, I want to be very cl clear about. He's not a random. He he has very critical critical insight in old school references. Like he'll leave a link to older videos and older music all the time, and I don't have a problem with that. It, it just it just lets me help me organize the kind of person he is. He's not a random troll or critic. He, he, he wants something. He wants to provoke thought. He wants to provoke a response. He wants people to do better. So I have no problem with him. I just think his arguments and his ways of delivering that message fall on deaf ears because his delivery in the text format doesn't make sense because he's typing out of the emotional space and he's usually typing up to people who already understand it already. Like, like I'm 15 years or more into doing this. So I've seen all these arguments in a forum post, on a Twitter post, on a MySpace post, in an email, in a real life conversation, at a beat battle. I've I've seen this argument happen between other people. I know all the answers to all of these, even if they're not my own answers, right? So it's an old, that's why I call it old. It's an old argument. So we'll get to that. What's good display name? We, we started with your question. So that's what we're going to do. What's good dope snare? What's good, Michael? Razor Blade or Mac for FL? I don't know. I don't have a. I don't have a reference to the comparisons, bros. I'm not the comparison king. Um, there's a lot of people out there who do comparative work, but I'm always. I've been on Mac since I've worked for Apple, and I don't think I'm changing that. Um, and when the iPad Pro gets here, I'll probably be doing more of that. To be honest with you, FL Studio Mobile. I might be doing more of that. Who knows? Half of my half of my crutches aren't on iPad though. My audio marketplace is in the building. What's good? What's good, Groovy Soul? He's stuck in the past. Is you know what's crazy? He's not even stuck in the past. He's stuck in the in the lie of the past. 
That wasn't the reality when he came up. And I'm about to get to, I'm going to go this line by line. You should flip that Sister Rosetta link for the memes. <laughs> no thanks. I don't like struggle samples. His arguments reminds me of the argument back in the day about Henry Ford against the horse riding crowd. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 the farm stables and the horse people who raise horses were very upset. Not even when Ford had a car because Tesla had a car back then. Those black guys in the Midwest had cars back then. A lot of people were making cars. And the horse, the cattle ranchers and people were just looking sideways like, that'll never be this. That'll never replace, you know, a really good steed. And the next thing you know, it Henry Ford blow up shoelates the mass production of such cars and then bang. Use what works for you. Right. There will be most guys that was able to afford real instruments growing up. Yeah. yeah. True, true, true. Wow. It's like that, Garrett. So I'm going to go by line by line. Um, because this just make the presentation a little bit better. So the first thing, with all due respect, it's toxic thinking. It's like you don't want to grow up. And I'm, I'm translating here. And what he's saying is, when, when, in that video, I was talking about how like hip hop and how to sample and how to manipulate samples and how copyrights work and all that. I, I don't think any of that is information that is well received or can even be intellectualized by people who are beginners or people afraid to grow up musically. Because the fact of the matter is, what I demonstrated in that video is all new technology. So the contrapositive or the reverse of what he's saying is that you have an adverse reaction to new technology because you're too old and rigid to try something new. What's interesting in that video is what I said is once I made the decision to make things that simple and all the technology and stars aligned in the last two years for me to do it so fast, I, pre I specifically said it's not interesting to me anymore. So I don't use that technology that way for those kind of beats because they lack complexity. And I don't know if he missed that or if that's part of the nuance he's adding to the bottom. You so-called producers. So he can't be talking about me because I already addressed that. But with the framework of me understanding how to manipulate those tools or you guys understand how to use those tools, you then get a certain level of confidence which I think is important for any creative endeavor to know that if you do run into a problem, there's tools that exist out there that are affordable or usually in your DAW already that can solve the problem for you. So what I am solving for people that's more important than creativity is time because I don't care how creative you are. If you don't have enough time to create, you don't create shit. Nothing comes out. Nothing gets released. If you don't manage your time correctly, if you don't get things created in time, even not with time, but in time, if you don't make things in time, you may miss the boat or the ticket or your way in. So I'm all about saving time. And I think it alarms people, purists, hip hop people, people from the hardware days. I think it alarms them that I exist and other people exist that create the same kind of music and quality of music in a very short time. And it's almost to say to them, because they got paid for their time back then. Remember back in the day, they paid, they were paying people by hour. They're paying them a lot by hour. We don't have that benefit no more, right? Like you remember back in the day, they used to say it took them two or three days to cut the record. And in my mind, I used to seriously think about that. Like that used to perplex me. That was one of the beefs I had with Kim Lewis on Gear Sluts forums. That took them so long, so much time, because they book out these studios and say it took them three days to cut the song. But then you actually talk to people in the industry and realize a couple of things. And this is probably more important than what I'm about to show you. This is very important. When they were on a time block schedule, they fucked around and wasted their time. Remember that intro to that one Drake song, Pound Cake? And they had that guy talking from the record. He was talking about they order the champagne, they get the food, and they're fucking around until it's time to play the instrument, right? But he said in the beginning of that statement that people, the label sent them down there to play a song. And the label was paying by hour. So how long did it take them to drink, get high, eat food? That's all being paid for by the label. So in other less extreme cases or scenarios, there's people who go into the studio and they'll start from scratch, right? They'll fuck around and make, maybe they'll make 10 or 20 beats. How many videos do you see of producers? Like back in the day, they used to post, like Hip Boy used to post, he was in a studio with Christina Milian or Hip Boy was in a studio with Fabulous. Like how much time is that of him playing beats, right? then making something from scratch and then scratching that, right? Everyone's fucking around for a few hours and they're getting paid to fuck around for a few hours. Now, 
speed it up. I don't need to give too many more examples, but speed it up. So right now, when people talk about they don't have uh, those budgets anymore, look how much work is being done in a shorter time. Go to Pensado's place. He, he talks about time all the time. He talks about because he uses plugins because of time, because of label budgets. So they're getting the same results. They're doing the same thing with these plugins and computers, um, reaching the same market with way less time. And no one's talking about that. Everyone's talking about the fact that the label cut the budget, but no one's talking about they're still getting the job done in much shorter, focused, concise time. So the label didn't really hurt anything. The label got hit to the fact that people were fucking around and saying, well, if you guys still need three days, I have these kids over here on Pro Tools HD that can do it in three hours. Get on our level. And that changed the financial aspect because you can't charge someone the per hour rate even if they're in a computer box because they're not paying electricity for a whole fucking B studio. There's a lot of levels of value in, in things that people calculate, especially people with a lot of money. They, they look at this way more critically than we ever would. So I understand that transition and that change. So what? Grow up, as this line says. The, the growing up part is understanding that everything in the past is in the past, and there's easier and faster ways to do it. And if that's threatening to people, you only have two choices, get out the way or learn how to do it the new way. I was always on the wave of learning how to do it the new way. I have no regrets about that. I only have nostalgia. <laughs> the next line, we can let go of sampling. We can create original songs. We can, but we're not. And, and maybe no, we can't. Or maybe no, we can't in the time that we're in, or maybe that we're all working towards that in some indirect way. Because there are original songs still. There's, there's so many original songs It'll make your head spin. There's so many purists out there in the universe that'll make your head spin. But what happens to them is that they're overlooked. They're on Instagram. I had someone hit me up today. Um, he said to me, and it was such a strange thing because it all, you know, everything connects. He was saying, yo, bro, I finally got a sound that I'm confident in, but I, I find it challenging to find my tribe because my sound is so different. And I don't know who would respect that or participate or care about that. So how can I alleviate this thing? How can I enter the marketplace? Because those questions are always business questions, not art questions. He figured out art and confidence on his own, originality. But he's so original that it doesn't sound like nothing else, right? So what I told him was the least original thing. I said, play your music for people who know you and who can give you honest feedback and ask them, what does these songs most sound like to you? Or if you have music friends, people who are connoisseurs of music, if you're an original artist or musician, you normally have other friends who love original music. That's why you become that way. And, and that's overrated too. A lot of people make the kind of music they make because of girls. Stay woke out here. But anyway, so uh, I said to him, give, let them give you honest feedback about this art and see what they compare it to. And it has to be honest. If, if it's comparable to trash, it's trash. If it's comparable to Jay Dilla, it's Jay Dilla. If it's comparable to Knife Wonder, it's Knife Wonder. If it's comparable to some Neptunes, it's Neptunes. Although you're labeling, self-labeling it original, find out what it sounds like. And from that information, get better at it and then present it to people who enjoy the things you're comparing it to because nine times out of 10, their ear is gonna like what you're doing, right? It's simple mathematics. And when you start buying ad stuff and you start getting into CRM data, You'll start to see how effective that suggestion really is later down the line. So, yes, people, it's not a, a we can, it's we are. But this is aimed towards people who don't. So you have to qualify this part of it and say, why don't people do that? Because it's unnecessary for the marketplace. That's the simple answer. We don't get, need to get, philo get into deep philosophy and feelings about it. It's just it's not required at this moment. Next thing, why be good at it when you could be great at it? The it is the only thing we disagree on. Learn music fundamentals and create original songs with your brain. This is a contradictory statement, my friend, and for everyone who teaches this and preaches this. Music fundamentals, if there is such a thing, if there's such a thing as music theory, notice it's a music theory, and if there's music fundamentals, if there's a curriculum in which you can teach people the fundamentals of music, you are setting up boundaries and restrictions on their creativity. The end. There's nothing else to talk about. What are we talking about? You cannot both say 
get learned, get educated, and then demonstrate. Because the only thing you can demonstrate is what was born out of your learning. So there is no originality there if you're asking us to refine it. So when they say learn the piano, learn an instrument, learn how to read music, learn sheet music, all the references in this old system are still going to take you back to someone else's work. It doesn't matter if it's classical or not. It doesn't matter if you're classically trained. Your derivatives will be classical derivatives. Yes, that can sound interesting and funny and be useful in the terms of hip hop, but fundamentally, you're still just interpolating classical tendencies. The way you play, the arpeggios you learn, the way the keys are ordered, the way you invert your chords. It will still have a classical framework. If you do that with blues, it will have a blues framework. If you do that with all of our producers that we like that grew up in church, there is a gospel framework. So you cannot both say to sample, sample people to learn the fundamentals of music from a discipline or from a school of thought and then be original with that because you're not asking for anything different. You're asking people to pick a discipline. You're not you're divorcing creativity at that point. It's fucking stupid, bro. Like people are really retarded, bro. Like that's irritating to me, bro. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. I don't even know why I'm so mad about that. It's like people don't think all the way down the street or something. Like people just look at it in front of them and be like, well, if you learn the instrument, that'll answer everything. They got like this nearsighted vision that's stupid because they don't see how the curriculum was formed. They don't see what the influences are. They don't see what happens in the university and the schools and what people are taught and what people are downloaded and what people make videos about. I've seen all the traditional YouTube music theory videos by the best people that make them with the most views. And guess what? It's all the same classical fundamentals. Guess what? Scalar put all of that in a $50 plugin. Move on. Unless your goals are different. Unless your goals is to play classical and perform in jazz bars and things like that then yes, you should niche and discipline in that. And my advice would work for you because I'm going to show you how to find all the music that you like to play really really simply. And all you have to do is get the sheet liner music and focus on that instead of 100 different genres. Like, people are weird, bro. But anyway. Woosa. Woo. When black people had creativity, and that's such a, sh a strange thing. I understand the connection where he said about we black people and 7-7 wisdom. He's speaking from a school of thought again, which is not original, but it, it may serve a purpose in his life and have elevated him to a certain level of awareness. So I, I can't disrespect that. But what's interesting is when he said we black people had creativity, I'm, I'm severely offended because I'm assuming he's a black person and I'm assuming he's commenting on me also recognizably as a black person. And when he said when we had creativity and originally and skill and proficiency, it's like a black person is telling me, that I don't have those things because I do not subscribe to older thought or mechanisms. Where the things that I do do right, or the things that I do do that are efficient, or the things that I do do that require skill are glanced over. So you, you take our tribe, our tribal tendency of black people, and then you're subdividing black people. You, 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 you created, you created a, a line in the sand for the type of black people that we are, right? So you micro-tribed us. And then you're putting me and people like me or people who are watching my video and saying, you black people who are using the hacks and sampling, you Negroes go over there until you Bill Cosby it up and come back, back to us, to our fold. And that's, and that's, and that's so damaging that, that th this is toxic for real. Like, because the, the ending is we created new genres, but he's, he's saying ED, 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 ED. We still do. Trap is a new genre. What are you talking about? There's festivals and ED. There's millions of people around the world just paying for $75 tickets to have the time of their fucking life over some Miami bass music right now. What are we talking about, bro? Like, come on. Like, come on. It just doesn't look like the past no more. And that's what we're, that's what we're trying to get at. Nah, it's the same shit. Black people are still doing that. And, and not just black people, all people. Music is still growing. Y'all just don't like where it's growing into. But the problem with that is, the reason why you guys don't like where it's growing into is because you didn't try to innovate. You created and reduplicated and repeated all this in the box BS instead of innovating yourselves and then teaching people along the way. That is the disconnect. That is the difference between the old and the young. The old get rich, and when they get rich, they don't care no more. When they don't care no more, they don't pass anything down. They think they leave a legacy because they put their name on a building. That is not legacy. Legacy is community building. So by you setting the rules for a community but not going down into the dirt and building it, you have nothing to stand on because most people are not going to walk into an empty fucking building. 
You left it empty. It's your fault. And I'm not even talking to him no more. I'm talking about anybody else who's watching who shares that same sentiment, who sends me those same passive aggressive texts, who always got something to say about what we're doing and how we create and how we get down. It's no thanks to you. So blame yourself. Moving on. We do not have to sample. You're choosing to sample. I don't think I've ever made the argument that someone had to do anything. Your beats do not have to sound like everyone else's. I agree, but if you're making squares, it should sound like a square. Find me another James Brown or Prince, you can't. And this is where things get messy on my, ch on, on my side of things. I don't have the same reverence towards James Brown and Prince that those people do in terms of listening to the music, in terms of analyzing impact, acknowledging the utility of James Brown's sounds and drums and all that, and acknowledging Prince influence on culture and fashion and things like that. I can acknowledge all of that, but I don't find anything original about their music in, re in regards to when I started listening to music. There's not, I can't go back to James Brown. So I don't have that kind of feeling of finding someone else like James Brown. I'm not even looking, I'm hoping no one tries to redo James Brown. So I don't think he means that. So then he says, we'll try to do Prince. Prince has a limited amount of music that has reached my ears. I know he has deep catalogs and he has hidden catalogs and he has stuff that should be coming out soon. And he's contributed a lot as a songwriter, even. He probably has a lot of ghost productions out there that are deep. He influenced one of my favorite groups, the Neptunes. I analyze all of that, but trust me, I don't, I'm not looking forward to find another guy who's five feet tall wearing high heels prancing around stage. I'm not looking for that. And I know he doesn't mean that literally, and I don't even mean that literally. But what I'm saying is you're taking two icons that were born when the app store was created. There was only James Brown and there was only Prince and there was only part of it and there was only Otis Reddy. You can name every fucking person that came out in that time between these two and all of them are original. They're all one-to-ones. There's very few carbon copies of anyone born when the app store was created. The reason being is because the only thing that may have damaged that is when that music started to get sampled. Everything was original until people start sampling in the 80s. Electronic music and dance music and techno and house. Everybody seemed to be that. But if we flip that on its head and go, well, the shy lights sound like the dramatics and the dramatics sound like the impressions and Foster Silver sounds like Michael Jackson and Michael Jackson sounds like this. When you start doing that, shit starts to get shaky. And then people, uh, 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 they don't know how to answer that. How is Michael Jackson Jack of Jackson 5 supposed to be this phenomenal, unique, original artist a student of James Brown and Prince, by the way, there's a trifecta and he probably left them out on purpose, but we know damn well Michael Jackson didn't have the most original songs or voices because there's about 20 other kids groups that sounded just like him. And that had nothing to do with Michael Jackson. That had to do with the nature of the industry. The Silvers and all these other people, the labels look just like they do today. Atlantic, Sony, Universal. And they find their own in their own region and develop them and they hit the airwaves and everyone sells their copy because if Sally Joe in Tennessee likes Michael, then the her counterpart and her match in Dakota are gonna love Foster Silver. That's just the way shit is, because humans love more. Humans don't love diversity. Humans love more of what they love. What are y'all talking about? Like, what are, what are fundamentally people don't understand humans? And I get it. And that's why we're slaves to the ones who do. Okay, I'm off that. Sampling is lazy, not efficient, because you're not exercising your creativity and originality and cheating yourself. I don't know, I don't, I, I don't care about the, you know, everyone knows that, you know, not everyone can sample and not everyone can <laughs> pick good samples and not everyone can recompose samples to sound something good and not everyone can take a sample song and sell five million records. So we know all these answers already. What he's saying is cheating yourself, but cheating yourself out of what? playing Oregon in church on Sunday? Because if I sample and I'm proficient and I'm using Fruity Loops and I'm using CoEdit Pro, right? And I'm sampling all the time. I'm sampling every day. And I take that catalog because it sounds good. It sounds like hip hop. And I start reaching and reacting with local people, right? And I start getting songs done. I start getting albums done. And I, and I get on the internet and they're talking about hip hop. They're talking about Dilla. They're talking about Q-Tip. They're talking about Tribe. And my music sounds really close to that. And then I put out my artists and my songs and people respond to that and they resonate with that because people want more of what already exists. They want more of good stuff. So when I present my good stuff, 
that that does a certain amount of attention. And then the cool kids who heard my stuff tell other cool kids. And I get a, a random phone call from somebody. And it ended up being Young Guru who invites me to meet Jay-Z to produce a track on his fucking Black album. And we're talking about Knife Wonder right now who's teaching at college universities about the history of sampling. So what are people talking about? Us black people, Knife Wonder did all of that. He's in the Zulu nation. He's in, in all the esteemed black boule, <laughs> as I call him. And he's a teacher on top of that. He did all of those things that we're criticizing. And we and then that guy right here, the same 7-7 seven, seven wisdom and everyone like him in his tribe will look at Knife Wonder and dap him up and want a fucking autograph. They're hypocrites. It has shit to do with sampling. You're fucking hypocrites. If Q-Tip walked up to this kid, he would freak out. If if any of these people walk up to these people who to pretend to be purists and you should learn instruments, if any of the hip-hop sampling legends who could only sample walked up to them, they'll lose their damn minds like a bunch of fangirls. And we all know that. So everything they're talking about is bullshit. I, my apologies for my intensity, but it's based on a true story. Go ahead and try to create from a totally blank canvas. This does not exist. There is no blank canvas. Once you are born into society and you're raised by parents who play music, you are contaminated. There is no blank canvas for creativity. There is no infant who has no frame of reference to what's around them. There's no, the first thing you teach your children are colors, shapes, and names. There is no blank canvas because we're all we're taking is pattern recognition and applying it to sound. We still recognize and have our favorite shapes. So there is no blank canvas. Cut it the fuck out. Create your own drums by using a drum set and sample it. He's talking about the goat farm simulation. Create your own chord progressions. They, 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 but no, because early on you said go back to the fundamentals. So if I go to the fundamentals and I learn all 12 chords and all 12 scales, my chord progressions are going to be derivatives of fundamentals and I'm going to run into problems with my chords. Let me show people who may have not seen this before because it is fucking annoying to see people have this argument. In 2020, damn near. Let's cut this out. I'm gonna go into my blank canvas. Please don't make me sign in with Facebook, bro. You're gonna make you're gonna, oh no, no, no. We're not doing this today. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, sir. This is done. Anytime someone says something stupid to me, I'm gonna show them this video. Because it's done. It's over. You're done now. I'm being very nice and diplomatic on my previous videos, but I'm I'm tired of it. It's over. That, that whole that whole era is dead and these discussions are proof that they're dead. They're trying to keep it alive, though. And I want it to die a little bit faster. Where where are we? Where is that thing? I know it's here. Search by chords. To begin, click a circle to the left. So, you know, taking my fundamentals. I'm noodling the ivory. I'm feeling the F chord today. Click on the F chord. The, the simulation that this is running is based on the fundamentals because music theory, or at least the scales that we use in the West, are Pythagorean, right? So there's a repetition, there's a pattern, there's a spacing. So there's only a limited amount of, of movements or moments you can go for things to sound a certain way or for something to be pleasing to the ear. Because the ear is mathematical. Your frequency range, your ear is a sandbox even. So there's a range in which of frequencies that you respect, and there's a range of music which you find pleasing, and this mirrored nature originally, and then that became instruments, nature, instruments, synthetic, right? So here we are. So I know F goes to whatever. What this takes the liberty of figuring out for me is, more than likely F goes to G or C than it does A and D. But it's not saying it can't, it's just saying it's not likely. So if I go to the most likely, or which is C and the other one, you see our choices become very clear at a certain amount of time. And then this is a four chord chord progression, which is pop music. And then we'll end it on F. So we go F, G, A, F. Now there's a list of songs from different languages, from different people, from different years, from different genres. Black Street Boys to Bon Jovi, Britney Spears, Chris Brown even, all use this four chord chord progression. And all of these are produced by different people during different times at different ages 
for different record labels, for different everything. Angel of Mine and 3X by Chris Brown is the same fucking progression. Who would have thunk it? Like, what are we talking about, people? Even when you try to be original, you can do an R&B ballad and turn it into an exciting fucking Sprite commercial by just using the fundamentals of music theory. You're still going to overlap with someone else. Hallelujah. The, one of the most famous songs there is. Come on now. Like California Girls. One of the biggest songs by Dr. Luke. W what are we talking about? TikTok Kesha. We're starting to see Dr. Luke is favoring a pattern in this particular progression. So what are we talking about? I, I need to know the answer to that question because there's no such thing as your own core progression. That's all I'm saying. So the only thing that Melodyne does that that website doesn't do or me knowing the fundamentals off of memory it's just it just helps me see it in the music i'm interested in so what i'm actually hacking is what i like what if what if you don't like the fucking fundamentals like no one asks that question i think that's why it's weird for me i could go through that website all, all day long and create similar things and look up things but i don't like none of that shit that that website has so I'm being original in the fact that I don't go to that website and just remake beats on some random chord progressions. I'm being original in the sense that I want to go towards the stuff I don't hear represented. And I need Melodyne to see what that is, because guess what? This site ain't going to have it. So Melodyne's for that. Or Melodyne's just for finding my baseline. That's a whole different issue. Or Easy Keys. The Easy Keys things doesn't make sense because it's the... it's. No chord software except the circle of fifths. Easy Keys is based originally on the fact that it has a circle of fifths interactively that's built in. It's, it's constant contradictions. There's no clear thought into this. There's no clear, no, what I mean is, there is no clear meaning or message or root of conversation being had except for the person is disgruntled in reality that this information is being taught and presented for free. This is a gatekeeper script and narrative. This is an Agent Smith script. This is meant to detract people who see it in passing to go, oh, I'm not going to watch this video. I'm not going to do this because some random guy on the internet thinks it's bad. But the guy who's incoherent on the internet because his argument isn't a real argument doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. The end. That's all I have to say about that. And that's not disrespectful to him because he's copying and pasting this from every argument that exists from the same kind of people. It's a tribe. It's a, it's a B-flat minor argument. I'll put it that way. It's not him. I'm sure. I'm sure if we can go back and forth with me, he'll give me. He'll give me more than what I see in front of me. But he's not giving me more here, bro. There's nothing but contradictions. Create your own original baseline. Why create a baseline? Why? Why? Why do drums, chords, and bass and melody if you're trying to be fucking original? Like that's even stupid, right? Right. Write your own rock song from scratch is what he just. He tasked me to make a James Brown song, but he wants me to be original when I do that. Why that? What if I just want to make house and techno? If I'm making drum and bass, I need the amen break. I repeat, if I'm making drum and bass, I need the amen break. I need a sampled chord because the sound and aesthetic of drum and bass are sample chords and the amen break. Don't, no, 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 don't make your own drum and bass. Okay, so pick a different drum break in a different sampled instrument of an orchestra and use the similar or slower tempo and make something else? Oh yeah, that's probably called house music. That's probably called chill. It's probably called something that people are already fucking doing, but you're using the corniest sounds you can imagine to do it. That is the problem. Because when you go outside of the box that you're in, when you go outside of the square that you're in, you lay it on a triangle and then you find some people around the world. That's why you have to ask and source people. That's why the Internet's a beautiful thing. So people could tell you, yo, that triangle you're making, you know, it has a name, right? Isn't that what happens when we talk about lo-fi? Like when I did that whole discussion about describing what new lo-fi is versus the past, these same people are going, oh, that's just Jay Dilla stuff. But when you really listen to lo-fi, none of it sounds like Jay Dilla. None of those kids have Jay Dilla's rhythm. So what is the Jay Dilla stuff? The fact they have an SP-404? Newsflash, the SP-404 doesn't sound like the SP-303. So it's not that. The fact that they're using samples? Well, Jay Dilla used all the soul stuff that Kanye used. Um, these kids are using library music and jazz. Maybe Tribe Called Quest is the common denominator. Maybe Slum Village is. But none of those lo-fi producers sound like Slum Village beats. Because their brain doesn't actually process what they're really listening to. 
They hear tempo, they hear a kick, they hear a snare, and they hear this looseness. They use the simplest terms to identify things off the cusp, and they define it by their simplest analyzation of it. I'm a deep analyst. I analyze and listen to shit deep that I care about. Caveat, box, that I care about. <laughs> Not everything that people come to me for. I don't care about everything. But the things that I care about, I'm very deep and passionate about. People who judge things off the cusp don't get that deep. So they sound like idiots. And that's the beauty of it. They, cause they, cause, cause, cause I say all of that to end on this note. He does not have to agree with me. He doesn't have to see it my way. That is the beauty of humanity. I need him to be B flat minor because I'm sure there's a different, a different aspect of what he's trying to convey. That's beautiful and useful and utility for something else. Just not this discussion, right? So I'm not casting him away. And the, the, I'm not throwing away the baby with the bathwater. I'm throwing away the bathwater. This is trash. So, that's that. On top of all that, goddamn. <laughs> Interesting. That's how we got type beats. People didn't really know how to describe what they were doing. Um, yeah, I mean, we call them type beats because what people were doing, like we blame the producers and beat makers for type beats. It's not. Type beats fault is the rapper's fault. I, I don't mean the music, I mean the why it exists. Why, why type beats exist? Um, because rappers literally DM, email, message you can you make this type of beat for me? So when the market, the producers react to the market, the, when and we start talking in forums and sharing these texts and these screenshots with each other, because now we can send images really fast, we go, okay, it seems like right now, a lot of people are asking for that zero to 100 beat. Um, if you're Superstar Owen Vibes on Xbox Live playing Call of Duty and you bring that up to each other, Right off you finish playing Call of Duty, you're going to go home and make a 0 to 100 type beat because at least three emails have came in in both your inboxes for that type of beat. And you want to make it because you want to buy the next Call of Duty. This is common fucking sense. This is not a, this is not a creative problem anymore. Those who can do will. So if I can make that kind of beat, I will make that kind of beat because someone asked me to. That's the human utility part. You got to get good enough to be able to do that too. You can be good enough and make your own art, but you also got to be good enough to deal with stuff that people want from you. You're useless to me if you can't do anything for me. And and that selfishness or that uh or, or or whatever however you look at what that what I just described to you is, that is what market is. You go to the market to go to a farmer, and if the farmer is not growing corn, he is not your farmer no more because you want corn. What do you do? You go to another farmer that has corn. The end. Doesn't mean this farmer isn't good at growing pickles. Doesn't mean this farmer isn't good at making potatoes. It's a, it's a useless fucking farm. I need corn for these dishes. So it's the same thing with you being a creative person in the marketplace. Please pay attention to my boxes I'm putting around things. Because this is not a ubiquitous thing. This is, this is not one size fits all. This is not for everybody. This is, I'm speaking from my experience and from what I'm exposed to. I'm not speaking for this is what you should do. I'm not giving you advice on what you need to do. I am speaking in terms of the box that I'm, you know, the, the type beat thing, this, this whole thing. So because people did that, right? They create the zero to 100 beat. Two things happen. <laughs> the rappers are probably not going to buy it, but someone else does. And then when someone else buys it, you'll notice how many plays and downloads you got. You'll notice how much attention you got. You'll notice how much negative attention you get from people like 77 Wisdom saying, oh, you didn't even change anything. You're just adding drums to the sample. But you're going to notice that that voice gets smaller because the people who are rapping and freestyling and the producers who like you are like, yo, that's actually cool. How did you do that? And the questions that come from that isn't how did you make it or 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 how does it sound like that? Because they fucking know already. They heard the original song. What they're asking you is, where did you find that sample? Utility. What drums are you using? Utility. The people in your field start asking utility questions. Every question that comes to me is a utility question. Hey, bro, I love what you do, but I have a utility question. I'm a farmer. 
So people are asking about where do I grow my corn? You know why? Because they're tired of paying prices for corn. They want to see if they can grow their own corn. And then that filters out people eventually because people are going to go back and try to grow their own corn and figure out it's a little bit more difficult. And that's why I'm the best person growing corn. And then they go, all right, I'm going to come back and I'm going to buy with you. I'm going to find a place that sells cheaper corn. But all that I just said, being born out of tight beats or making tight beats is based on the success of the original beat. Frank Duke's Boy Wonder Drake. That trifecta, those people inspired a hundred, if not more variations of that thing. And that that corn was cloned and now shared and edified by multiple people because it, it, it serves as a tool in a fucking utility. No one's going to be able to make and freestyle a better zero to 100 song. And even if they did, the people or in the marketplace you would sell that to where that would make a difference, don't give a fuck because it already exists. So the utility for people doing this cannot be that they're in the same marketplace and that is the thing that people don't understand the internet is not the same as real life that's where people are confused that's why the music industry took too long to adapt because they understood real life perfectly they understood that you make a song doesn't matter what it is as long as it fits in this harmonic and frequency and content and you play it on the radio when people are on the way to work and on the way home when it's time to cool down on the weekend there and go to a club or a function hear the song again and if they pass a record shop they're probably going to buy it because they're buying it for the utility of holding their memories has shit to do with the skill of the piano player involved that is creative talk that is not utility talk if you're creative you are creating something for someone else. What they want to do with it is no consequence to what you created. Once you create it and let it go, it's not yours no more. So you cannot define the rules on how it should be received, right? That's how come we can't choose our fan base. That's why I can't choose my tribe. I cannot make people receive me a certain way. It either is or it ain't. That's why I love it. It is what it is. I get all the nerds. I get all the geeks. I get all the people who are smart. And I love that. Because that's what I love about me. But I, I, I don't get the cool, like the super cool dude over there, way over there, trying to work with me. And that's fine. And I'm and I'm, I'm growing to learn that. But it's the same thing with type beats. Same thing with all the utilities I just laid out for you. We need people to do that in the internet market because everyone is still in the utility. Everyone's learning. So the questions in the in the demonstration is, is it serves everybody. Because once they talk about it, they're going to tell the wrong person. And tell a big mouth like me, big mouth is going to get internet, tell everybody. And then the people like you who are sound designers, you guys are going to learn from what I said. You guys are going to try to put it and then it's going to flood the market with five more variations of it. And then when there's five more variations of it, people like me again will go, oh, my God, really, really? And then we're going to get tired of that. And it doesn't matter what rapper bought your zero to 100 type beat. He's fucked. Because now there's a thousand of them. And there's a thousand rappers who work faster and better than him who have that type of song on Spotify too. So what are people worrying about? Blah, blah, blah. No one could qualify what the hell they're mad about. But I can't. I understand what people are mad about. That people are mad about market share. <laughs> people are mad about attention. And what happens is when you're in this particular system where you have to monetize attention, and the only way you can monetize attention without earning it is by buying ads. You'll notice that most people who are unsuccessful, like right now, if you're watching me on YouTube, you're gonna notice right next to my video and the suggested videos, the first suggestion to you, every time you come to my channel, it's probably the same video for days at a time. Most of you, because we're the smart tribe, may not ever click that video. But there's a lot of people who, who are not conscious of that. Um, they eventually click and watch that video. So that person that's marketing right next to my live video right now, or any of my videos, he's paying to be a suggestion to everyone that keeps watching me. And the more he pays for it to be there, the more people who are subconsciously uh, inclined to click on that video eventually. And, it, and if it's a good video or if it's a utility video, um, they will get new subscribers that come from my video, right? That's how that happens, right? So th that should tell you how this works because there is no shortcut to that. 
He's paying per click. He's paying five to 10, 15 cents per click, meaning he's paying per person, per, per eye, set of eyes. Um, and and what, what I'm saying is the kind of attention that people are frustrated about not getting, you can unfrustrate yourself by paying $20. Your frustration is worth $20. The questions you have, the problems you have, the hopelessness that you may fall into is all resolved by $20. But that doesn't solve what you're really looking for because you really don't want attention at that point. And I'm going to go down this road. So you get the attention, right? You pay $20 to Google AdSense. They pay $20 to Facebook, Instagram, and you get the attention. You get a lot of views, like just like the popular kids are getting. You even get a lot of comments too, by the way, if you pay it for per click. You only pay them if they click it. You do not pay them if they see it. Stay woke, because they still sell that old model and that's bullshit on their part. But you pay per click, so it's a little bit more expensive, but that means someone saw it. So you pay per click and you get the comments and you get the views and maybe you even get the sale, right? Then you're still not satisfied. Why? Because you realize that the thing that you're coveting and envying, attention, is not what you fucking want. You don't actually want the attention that Nick Mira or whoever the fuck has. You don't want to deal with that many people. You don't want to talk to that many people. You don't want a bunch of empty comments. You want fucking money. <laughs> be real with yourself. To thy own self be true. You don't want all the tertiary side effects of money. You want money. And I think that's what 7-7 Wisdom was really trying to say. I think what he's really trying to say is stop selling yourself out. Stop pimping yourself. I think maybe that's the argument he wants to make. But the only counter argument to that is you're on the Internet. The Internet was designed for this very thing. Web 2.0 is the pimping out of intellectual property and attention. There is, social media is either one or two things happening. You're giving attention or you're getting attention. You're either giving attention or you're getting attention. And all the market did was add itself to that and find a way to monetize it. The market's always there. Even if, if we stop using social media, a lot of people love this one. I'm not using YouTube and Google no more. All right, so you convince a whole bunch of people to go back the fuck outside. Guess what they're going to do? If they figure out what forest you're hiding in, they're going to put a pole in the fucking ground and put a billboard above you. While you're having all your conversations and playing your live banjo with your original chords, there's going to be an ad up there for fucking Walmart. Like, what are we talking about? People don't understand the Matrix. <laughs> People. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what are you doing on the Internet? It has free YouTube University. You know what you should be doing with all those free information is finding out all the ways you can make money and also all the ways you can save money. Because isn't that the other part of it, right? The utility of having a free market is that people undercut each other. So what you could do now, which is what I'm doing, because I have a Toyota Camry that has a fucking uh, uh, O2 sensors broke. I went on YouTube and figured out how to replace an O2 sensor in a Toyota Camry. My mechanic wanted $120 to run the laptop. I went to AutoZone and got a free diagnostic. O2 sensor, O2 sensor. I went to two different spots. It's the O2 sensor. Order the O2 sensor, $120, boom. Go on YouTube, 10 minutes. Time and labor, 15 minutes for me. That's what you use information technology for. The fuck, what do, what do you think this is? What do we think this is? So, 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 now, so now the mechanic who looks like this is saying, yo, be careful going on YouTube. Those people don't know what they're doing. And, and, you know, they ain't got no insurance. So, you know, they can have you. They can mess up your whole car. But what they're not thinking about is it's an old Toyota Camry. They can't mess up a car that's already messed up because it's old. So for me, the utility is the fact that it's already old, that it's already cheap, that I'm just trying to patch it up so I can go from point A to point B. I'm not putting sugar in the tank of a BMW because there's levels to the different devils there are. Of course, if I was having a Ferrari, I'm not going on YouTube and trusting someone with 500 fucking subscribers to tell me how to fix a Ferrari. Like people go from zero to 100 real quick. 
And it doesn't make sense. And that is the consequence of not being very well exposed to different ways of thought. You know, it's not necessarily smart on my part. It's just me being exposed to different people for 30 years on the internet. You start to see what works and what doesn't work. And then you start to formulate a model of how you think it works. And then you actually see what it really is because you judge and you judge and you realize you can't judge it. You just have to let it be what it is. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Facts, yeah. I can't find a sensor for 10 bucks. It's like 150 for that car, for that make and model where I live with the shops around me. OO or O'Reilly's Auto Parts. But anyway, guys, I'm done talking. Like I said, I want this video to be the end all. So anyone talks at me sideways in my comments. Like that. If any B flat minor people come to my videos again, they can watch the first hour of this and have a have a very well, very well documented discourse and how I don't care. So <laughs> let's just play stuff. So I'm gonna play a song. I was just messing with signing them because you know it could uh, match things by timber and how things sound. And I was messing around with the uh my 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 internet producers, right? Um my people who are influ influential to me because what I've noticed in doing this is that the reason why they influence me is because they sound the most like my influences. And, and, and to my surprise, they're all similar because they all sound like each other. And that's whether or not they're copying each other or like each other. I found everyone I'm influenced by is in the same tribe. <laughs> Be fine, my nerd. So we got this. This is Corian from a very long time ago. So that beat is that uh, basically what Diddy tried to do when he came out with his first album uh, last night, like all of those songs that Diddy was doing um, for a certain amount of time inspired other people to try it. And he, we know that comes from a Prince type of derivative. It's a disco. It's a club club music, basically. So I I searched for Corian because he's from years ago. And I was listening to my other producer friends that it thinks it's similar to. Notice the similarity is disparaging. It's not it's not 90% similar, which would have been curious. It's over 50% similar. So I started going through those. But I, I like to narrow it down by tempo, too, because tempo will make it sound more homogenous. So that's 127. Let's see what 130 sounds like of that. Oh, my hard drive. That's why That's why on Twitter I asked how do I make an external solid state. This is Chase Cash. Why do they feel like that's similar? Because they are. Is the same type of drum uh, tendency. This one isn't though. It's the same timber though. You can mix them. That's more like timbo. This is DJ Kaz. This is a Diddy type beat. Nineteen ninety five to beat dot com. The is the similar all of them. It's old chase cash. And old chase cash sounds like old cheddar. Uh, chase Mace. And I could I could do a whole breakdown of Chase Cash and his history and him growing up with going growing up and going through the hip boy situation. So but anyway. With that revealed to me, and all these people, we got uh, Hook Speeds, Chase Cash, uh, Cheddar Beats, Cheddar Meister now on Twitter, um, 1995abeat.com, who used to be too deep, and we got Nas 550s in here as well, further down the list. I took my five producers from that era 
put them in some kind of algorithm, analyze one of the type of beats that they make, and they all make the same kind of beat. Everyone in that tribe that I that I located organically through resonating with the kind of sounds and music that they make, when I look at them in this kind of spotlight, they all at some point make the same kind of beat eventually. Because that tells me that in the human aspect of it, they're all listening to and being influenced by the same kind of sounds. The thing that's different is maybe just their delivery of the sound, but the tendencies or the, the square, the DNA is still there. Cheddar, Chase Cash, all of them are all, Nas 550, they're all baby Timbaland, Neptune mixes. The end. People don't like, people don't like that. But, but what's curious is the success of them being able to embrace that. That's different. When you start to embrace that that's what that is, then what happens? That starts looking interesting. Um, <laughs> I could go on forever. Let me get a similarity search. Who else do I have? Because I have old ones. And notice those weren't the only producers in that search. That's everyone in my folder up to I. I don't know why I stopped at I. All right, so Info and DJ Kaz. Let's go to Info. Info is more Dipset. Let's see what happens when I analyze all of them to see who else was doing Dipset type beats. Perfect. Before I change from Info's folder, I want to see how many times he made that beat. That's the one that they stole. That's the one that uh, Keyflow's boy stole. Or a a hood. Um, Lee Major stole this beat. <laughs> I have to cut this short. Hold on. I'm gonna go back live in a second. Someone's knocking on my door. I'm gonna keep playing more songs though. I'll be right back.